In this video, you'll learn how you can create a flexible layout of controls in WPF using the DevExpress Layout Control and Editor Suite. The DX Layout Control is a complete layout management solution for WPF that can manage anything from a simple flow layout to a complex layout of a data entry form. Designing a layout is a simple matter of moving items around in an intuitive way at design time. With the DX Layout Control, you don't have to worry about properly aligning elements. The Layout Control will do that automatically. The second set of controls we'll use is the DX Editors Library. The DX Editors Library provides a set of editors with advanced features allowing you to create rich UIs and fully functional applications. Let's take a look at some of them. The simplest editor available is TextEdit. It supports multi-line editing, masked input, and various validation capabilities. Its descendant, the button edit, extends the base functionality and adds the ability to embed any number of buttons next to the edit box. The check edit helps you implement toggle boxes that have two or three states. The combo box edit allows an end user to select a value from a dropdown value list. Dropdown values can be either fixed items or can be fetched from a data source. The font edit displays available fonts in the dropdown window and allows an end user to select a specific font. The image edit allows you to display images in the window. The password box edit control lets you enter passwords while hiding text during input. The progress bar edit is tailored to indicate the progress of operations. Let's start building a new layout by adding a layout control to the window. To make it occupy the entire window, invoke the context menu and select Layout, Reset All. Add a text edit control to the layout. When the control is dropped, a layout item object is created, which is a wrapper for the dropped control. The layout item displays a label next to the control. When dropped, the text edit has a fixed width of 150 pixels. Remove this setting to stretch the control horizontally. You can change the layout item's label right in the XAML. For example, we'll call this item first name. Let's drop another text edit from the toolbox. We can, of course, make changes inside the XAML like we did with first name, but an easier way of renaming it would be from the smart tag. Let's call it last name. The smart tag displays the most commonly used properties of the controls. Other properties can be accessed and customized in the Visual Studio Properties window. Remove the width setting for the editor to stretch it horizontally. The items are arranged in a row by default. To arrange them vertically, use drag and drop. You can see that the background of editors is painted in gray. This color is determined by the current paint theme. The paint theme can be changed in XAML via the theme manager .theme name property. For example, let's select Office 2013, and the controls will change their background accordingly. Data for editors in this example is provided by a view model encapsulated by the user class. The user class provides public properties, such as first name, last name, etc., to which the editors will be bound. But first, we need to specify a data context for the window. Let's return to the Window Designer. Select the window and click the Smart tag. Set the data context to the user class. Now, editors can be bound to public properties provided by this class. Select the first name editor. Click the Smart tag and bind the Edit Value property to the First Name property on the user object. Repeat these steps for the Last Name Editor, binding it to the Last Name property on the user object. For brevity, I'll skip the creation and binding of other editors and show you the final XAML code. For this example, I've created different types of editors. For the country field, I used a combo box edit, which allows an end user to select a value from a dropdown list. For the birth date field, a date edit control. A photo will be managed by an image edit control. The login field, by a button edit. 
And finally, to allow a user to enter passwords, I'll use a password box edit. Let's further customize the layout using the capabilities provided by the layout control. Select the login item and click the Add New Group button. This creates a layout group, which is an item container with borders. Move the login, password, and confirm password controls to this group by simply dragging and dropping them. Rename the group by clicking the group smart tag. Set its header to login. The layout control also allows you to create a tabbed group. To create one, select the topmost layout item, in this case it's the first name, and click the Add a new tabbed group button. Add one more tab to the tabbed group by clicking the Add a new tab button. Move the first name, last name, country, and birth date items to the first tab. Note that the items don't have to be arranged in a single row or a single column. A mix is possible as well. You can also arrange some items into a column while arranging others into a row. To rename tabs, use the options provided by the Smart Tag. Name the first tab Main and the second tab Phones. Drag the home phone and work phone items into the second tab. And move the photo item to the bottom of the window. To make the group collapsible, select it in the Properties window or in XAML and turn on Is Collapsible Property. and the group header will contain the Expand Collapse button. To specify the initial expansion state, set the Is Collapse property. When this property is set to True, the group's contents are hidden. Set this property back to False to display the group's contents. Items in the layout control can be marked as required fields. These fields are painted bold to bring the attention of an end user to these fields. For example, let's see what it would look like if we set the login field as a required field. I'll do the same for the password as well. The photo item displays an image. To allow the image to be stretched vertically, set the Vertical Alignment property to Stretch. To limit the height of the image, set the Min Height and Max Height properties. The label of the item can also be removed, like so. Now, let's customize the editors themselves. The Country Combo Box Editor should provide a drop-down list of countries from which an end user can select. A set of supported countries is specified by the countries list in the user object. To bind to this list, we use the item source property available via the smart tag. The login layout item is associated with a button edit control. In this example, the editor contains only one button. However, you can create multiple buttons when required. To respond to button clicking, we subscribe to the default button click event. In the event handler, I set the editor's value to an empty string for demonstration purposes. Let's return back to the window designer. The login editor is not bound to data yet. Data for this editor will also be provided by the user object. The user object supports an iData error info interface used to implement data validation for the login, password, and confirm password fields.
Let's bind the login editor to data. Click the Smart tag. Bind the edit value to the login property on the user object. In addition, set the update source trigger setting to property change. This ensures that the validation mechanism is invoked on every change of the property. The last thing to do is to enable the validation mechanism with the validates on data errors property. In the same way, specify binding for the password editor. and for the Confirm Password Editor. Let's remove a border for the Photo Editor. Select this editor and set its Show Border property to False. The Phones tab contains two editors to enter telephone numbers. Masked input is the best way to ensure a correct user input. To specify a mask, click the Smart tag. Click the ellipsis button for the mask property to invoke the mask editor. Here, we can choose from many already built-in masks. Select the regx type, which stands for Extended Regular Expression Syntax, and select the telephone number mask. This mask allows you to enter phone numbers in different formats. I'll repeat this for the work phone as well. Now let's run the application to see the result. The login field displays an error icon indicating that this field is required. The data is validated in the user class, which implements the iData error info interface. If you click the editor's button, the editor's value is cleared and the error icon is displayed again. To satisfy the validation rules, we need to enter a password. If it's too small, another error is displayed indicating that the password is not long enough, prompting a user to correct it. If the password in the confirmation field does not match the password in the previous field, an error icon is displayed as well. Because, per our validation rules, the contents of the two password boxes must match. The country field is edited using the combo box edit control. You can click the editor's drop down button to see the list of available countries. The birth date field's value can be specified using a drop down calendar. A dedicated phone mask has been specified for the editors in the Phones tab, so it's possible to only enter phone numbers using formats defined by this mask. The photo is displayed using an image edit control, which provides context buttons to handle the loading of an image. If the window is resized vertically, the photo is resized as well to the extent specified by the min height and max height settings. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.